What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Pink Tokyo, and we are back at it again with another what? Another month video. If you are new to my channel, you already know what to do, sis. Go ahead and hit that month subscribe button, okay? <laughs> you guys, today is that day. Today is the day that I be real with myself, that I share with you guys the time that I lost my virginity, okay? The time that I lost my B card. <laughs> your girl was doing her thing okay i'm just playing i just want to start off if you are my family watching this out of the respect for me please respectfully exit the video okay please don't watch this video i'm making this video really for the girls just to raise just to raise like awareness and um just to let the girls the girlies know by whatever means if you're not ready you're not ready and make sure that's clear okay i don't care if you're peer pressured i don't care if all of your friends are doing it so take it from me okay like i wish that i would have waited to lose my virginity until i met the man that i'm with right now and you're not gonna meet that in high school i'm sorry sis. unless mysteriously unless out of that low percentage you meet your high school sweetheart but even this was wait till y'all married okay or wait till out of high school till you really know okay i was dreading making this video i wanted to make this video for a long time but i think right now i'm right sis. Sis, don't don't start interrupting the video diamond don't do that anyway um yeah so i was dreading making this video for a long time but i feel like now is probably the perfect i feel like now is the perfect time to just tell you guys a little bit more about me this started <laughs> i was 16. all right now i don't know why 16 years old is usually like that age where teenagers be losing shit and doing shit i, I just i don't understand that part but i was 16 okay i was in the 11th grade was i in 11th grade or 10th no, I was in the 11th grade and it was this boy who was in my art class. The previous year I had, I had art class two years in a row or was it three years in a row? I don't even fucking know. I remember art class. That's one of the classes I really remember in high school because I, I was in that class like two or three times. Right. Um, so I was in this art class with the boy. We're going to call him, we're going to call him D. I'm not going to hold you. I forgot the boy's name, but we, we're going to call him D. Okay. And his name is nowhere near the letter d okay his name don't even start with a d we're gonna call him d because he gave me the d I'm just, <laughs> I'm just playing okay so we're gonna call him d so d was in a grade lower than me so i knew him from the year previous before he was in my art class i never spoke to him a day in my life right we never spoke that year um he was just like one of those classmates right like he wasn't really like talkative like that but he had friends so in art class i used to be like really goofy i used to laugh a lot i know my teacher hated me and i just want to apologize y'all probably never gonna see this video but i just want to apologize for my immaturity and for disrupting the class by laughing i'm sorry i couldn't help it it is what it is i'm past that point okay so he was a grade lower than me so at that time he was probably in like ninth grade and i was in 10th grade so speed up we're going into the next year okay the transition from 10th grade to 11th grade for me i was depressed okay i went through my first heartbreak when i tell you like i thought that was my first love i went through my first heartbreak who i at the time claimed that that was my first love but really the ninja wasn't my first love the the man i'm with right now is my first love that's what true love is but he was my proclaimed first love in high school okay we ended up breaking up because he ended up cheating I have a video about that i'll link it up here if i remember he ended up like low-key cheating on me and we just broke we broke up then we tried to get back together and it was just like an on and off like thing i feel like my emotions was being played with and then during that summer transitioning from 10th grade to 11th grade i ended up talking to this guy i'm not gonna give him a name because he's not really relevant but i started talking to this boy i met him from a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend okay me and him was talking we was talking the whole summer and we ended up getting into a situationship i can't even call it a real relationship because it was not a relationship at all it was a joke it was i didn't take it serious right i literally just got out of one so he was kind of like the rebound right and i'm not gonna lie i'm being 100 real with you guys this was my thought process at 16 okay he was the rebound guy okay 
If y'all think females do not have a rebound ninja and y'all think it's only niggas who be doing it, sus, go ahead, change your mindset, sus, because we be doing it too. Um, so we was in a, a situation ship and transitioning into 11th grade. So in that period of time, he actually didn't even go to my school. In fact, he was a little older than me. Like this, this, nin this ninja was not even in high school, okay? This ninja was like 19 talking to a fucking 16 year old, okay? It's a thing, it happens. I'm guilty of it. I'm a victim. Um, <laughs> I don't even wanna call myself a victim because it's like when you're 16, you know what you're doing, right? But you try to justify Oh, he's 19, I'm 16. I mean, it's not bad, but it's like a little questionable. Mind you, me and this guy had never met in person, okay? The friend that put me on with him knew him, actually knew him. And y'all know it was a thing. If you were around the time where Kick was popping, um, Meet Me, do y'all remember those apps? Comment down below. But we was talking on Kick, and that's how we ended up meeting. That's how my friend ended up putting us on. That was our form of communi initial communication. It's a whole story about him as well. So check out my other videos. I don't even know if I'm gonna even be able to remember to link these videos, but I did make a video about him. Anyway, so transitioning, I had my other options as well, okay? I had other options. I had a few like little ninjas on the side, just in case this one didn't work out, or just in case the other one day. I made sure that I was set, okay? I had me a little phone book. All right. <laughs> After going through the heartbreak and talking to the rebound guy, my ex ended up coming and trying to come back into my life. We was trying to work it out or whatever. And mysteriously, we just stopped talking, right? And mind you, this was the guy like I was proclaimed in love with in high school. Mind you, he didn't even go to the same school as me. But good thing, that, I'm so glad that wasn't a situation because I would have been like, I would have been like, bruh. So I'm glad that wasn't a situation. We ended up trying to get back together and it ended up not working out again. I think that the same person that he was allegedly was cheating with or was interested in came back. It was just like a, it just reopened the can of worms, right? So at this point, I was over it, okay? I was over it. I didn't have no respect for myself because during that whole summer, I was literally depressed. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. I was like depressed that whole summer. So along with that depression, along that came with the depression, along came with me not having a lot of self-respect for myself. 11th grade hits. My friends, okay, it's something about them friends. Them friends, your friends can be really bad influences, okay? Like, them friends, y'all can influence the fuck out of each other, especially if y'all tight, okay? Listen, Slows, my friends started doing the do, okay? They started, they started fuck, fuck, fuck. They started fucking with these niggas, right? One of my friends is also, it started with one of my friends. At the time, they were my best friends. Like, we was a trio. We was, we was, mm, I got a, I got a story time on them too, Slows. But anyway, <laughs> we was a trio and one of them, you know, they was fucking on niggas that was older than them or whatever. You know, she would always tell us. And I'm not gonna lie, I would get a little curious because her story sounded pretty juicy, right? So then my other friend, ended up fucking with a nigga. She met this nigga on Meet Me. I, I'm trying not to say nin She met this ninja on Meet Me. They started fucking. She lost her virginity in the backseat of a car. So I'm like, God damn, I'm the last one, right? So me being me. Well, not me being me, because I'm not a follower at all. Like, in my adult life, <laughs> let me tell you now, let me tell you right now. In my adult life, I am not a follower. I am team me. I am team solo. Let's get that right, okay? Let's get that correct. So I was so curious that I was like, hmm, I think I want to try that. Like, hmm, I think I want to do what they want to do. Hmm, I think I want to be a follower today. <laughs> ugh, ugh, ugh. I'm like regretting, like, I was dreading telling this story for the longest, but I just knew, I just knew that this just has to happen, okay? It has to happen. Mind you, I was talking to the rebound ninja. It didn't work out with me and my ex trying to get back together. And all of a sudden, D, y'all remember D? D from my art class from the previous year ended up following me on Instagram, right? So he DM me, he's like, oh, I think you're really cute, da -da -da. You know, told me that he was interested, okay? And I never looked at this boy a day in my life. Mind you, this ninja looked like a fucking dinosaur. He was, he was cute. like the time before he did what he did and we're gonna get to that he was cute at the time like i was like okay i never really looked at him and i'm the type where i don't think my type is ugly ninjas okay i should do a video on that that's <laughs> <laughs> I should do a video on that. I don't think my type is ugly ninja. I just feel like I can see the potential in people. If you're somewhat attractive to me, I'm gonna give you the time of day. But if you just ugly, mm -mm. 
mm -mm, baby. If I just don't find nothing attractive, and that's how the rebound nigga was. That's how the rebound dude was. He was not attractive to me, so that's why I, I couldn't I couldn't pursue that any longer. That's why I did what I did, okay? Because mind you, we was in a situation shit. So I started talking to D. We started messaging each other and stuff. We would just chill. Like, I had a car around this time. Lord, whew, I hope my mom don't... Ma, she know that I lost my virginity at 16, but she never knew like the real story. So I really hope that she clicked off by this point of the video. But knowing her, she's gonna stay on this video. So you did it to yourself. I had a car when I was a teenager, okay? I had like a little Toyota Scion. If y'all know what that is, I'm gonna link the picture. I missed my Scion. I got into a car accident. They know it wasn't my fault, okay? So a fucking motorcycle running from the police don't hit my ass and totaled the damn car. I love that damn car. I would've still had that car to this day. I feel like one of them people that was different. You know, I had my car, my little knockoff smart car. That's what it was. It was like a smart car. It was so, so. I love that car. I used to fit about five to six people in there. We used to we used to squeeze in there. But anyway, that's besides the point. I used to have a car. You know, I pull up with my friends, da da da. All I had to do was tell my mom I'm gonna go see my friend, right? As soon as like you know you gonna go see your friend, you just got them little periods, right? Where you can you could go ahead and, and get past, get away with doing something else, right? So that's what I would do. Like me, I would go ahead and see D. Me and D would kick it. You know what I mean? And we didn't do nothing around this time. Like we would just chill, like Netflix and chill. No, nothing was happening. Like no physical touch was really happening. It was really just like chilling. So we did that for a good one or two months. It came to a point where when my friends was in the process of losing their virginities, when the, my friends were in the process of doing stuff like with other boys, I kind of felt a little left out. So I was just like, well, damn, uh, you know, I think I'm ready to do this. I think I'm ready to do this. For some reason, these little, these little boys, they didn't want to take me serious. And mind you, I was in that relationship, so my heart is already, my heart is already broken. So I'm already like going through it. I'm already questioning shit, you know. And like I said, I lost self-respect for myself around that, around this period of time. So it just came to a point where I was just like, you know, let me go ahead and test the waters a little bit. So me and him started, you know, talking and shit, you know, planning it. So one of the times before I went over his house to do whatever we did, one of the times when I hung out with him, I was in his room and I think he he went out to go take a call. So I was in his room by myself. So, you know, when you're in your room, somebody's room by yourself, sometimes you get a little nosy. I'm not gonna lie. He had these cards posted in his room, right? And mind you, the house he lived in, it wasn't all that. It was like one of them, I wanna say low key in the hood houses. Cause it wasn't in the hood where I felt uncomfortable, but it was, it was kind of like in the hood, right? So it was one of those houses, almost like a trap house. And his parents was like never there. I never seen no parents at all. It was always just him at the house. I'm in his room. Mind you, the room he has, he has no bed. It's just like him laying on the floor with, with like a little pallet, right? So that's what we used to chill on. And one of these days, I just decide to look on his wall and like kind of like browse around a little bit to see who the fuck I'm, I'm chilling with. I look on the wall, I see these Father Day cards. I'm like... I'm like, you know, I'm not putting two and two together because this man never told me that he had a child. Oh, mind you, D was actually older than me, even though he was a grade lower than me. That's a red flag. Okay, that's a red flag, first of all. He was like 17 or something and I was 16. He was he was like a year older than me, but a grade lower, like he got held back or something. I didn't notice this man fathered a child. Okay, so I'm looking, I'm putting two and two together, I'm like, I'm like, this ninja got a, got a kid. He got a whole kid. I put two together, but my dumb ass still fucking with this man. I don't think I ever brought it up to him, but I definitely texted the group chat. I definitely was like, this man has a whole kid. This man is a whole father. This man has a whole second life. This man is a fraud. Like, I'm like, bro, bro. <laughs> And my dumb ass at the time was still fucking with him, never questioned it because I didn't want to seem nosy. I just want to point that out, okay? So, me and the guy at school, how was it at school? He'll give me a hug in the hallway and stuff, but it'll be, I could tell it's, it was kind of like really quick, right? It's almost like he, he wanted to, he wanted to show me that he was acknowledging me, but he didn't want everybody in his business or knowing that we fuck with each other. It wouldn't be like a, we could hold hands and stuff like that because I actually did at one point like him. Mind you, he looked like a dinosaur. This ninja had a big ass nose. Mind you, he was on a football team too. Girls, if y'all, if y'all are thinking or considering it, do not fuck 
no man, no boy on the football team or any type of sports, god damn it, okay? Maybe the ninja on the soccer team, but don't, don't, don't fuck the best player, okay? Their egos be all the way up here, and then it's like, it really should be down here. Like, it, it really don't even be all that. I guess, you know, at the time, you're like, oh, he's a football player, like, Mm -mm. No, no, sus. I'm trying to tell you, sus. Nine times out of ten, they a loser. They a loser. Let's speed it up to the day, okay? So, the day is almost blurry to me because I really tried to push this day out of my mind, right? I really fucking tried. So, it's like some people probably remember every single detail, but I can tell you this, Lil's. I remember what type of color panty I was wearing, and I was wearing these Victoria's Secret pink panties. They was green and had light green trim at the top. I remember. I remember we was planning it. We started planning it like, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, 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 and a third, right? And I ended up pulling up to his house it was very quick it was not romantic at all so it was, it was not romantic it was very devaluing it felt very dirty it felt weird and very like insensitive it wasn't romantic at all you guys um I'm not gonna lie like I'm like thinking about it and like telling this story is really it's really hurting my heart for myself because when people say lose your virginity to the right person listen to those people because this person was not the right person you guys like whatsoever um so oh my gosh I don't know I didn't know it was gonna be this hard to tell this story because it's really sending me back and I've told this story before but now I'm really like sitting down and thinking about it it really kind of makes me emotional because I really feel so bad for the girl that I was when I was 16 and my heart cries for her because I'm a completely different person than I was back then and I'm sorry y'all, hold on. I'm a, I was a very completely different person than I was back then than I am now. And when I tell you now, I have so much respect for myself because when I, what I'm about to tell you guys, y'all are gonna be like, bro. I ended up going to his house. It was nobody there. We ended up being in a whole different location. It's almost like he changed his room around to like the back room. So as soon as you go into the back door, the room is right there which looks looks like it should have been like a family room or something but it was just i just remember his house being like really dirty he was just like okay well come on let's go look we can go here on the floor or whatever and he was being like really quick about it it was just no kissing it was if we did kiss it was like a peck and it's like i had no time to get ready if you know what i mean we had to do it real quick before his parents came home or whatever you know i, I kept my shirt on at the time when you know being growing up as a plus size girl you don't want to take off your shirt or whatever because you self-conscious i ain't gonna hold you now i just let that shit go i i can't <laughs> I don't even remember what outfit I wore, to be honest. I just remember the color panties I had on, and I'm gonna tell y'all why. I just remember it hurt so bad. It was excruciating pain. I think it was like maybe five, four minutes, four or five minutes of just pure ex excruciating pain. I just kept covering my mouth. I was like this. And he's like, why are you covering your mouth? He was just so insensitive to the fact that you're literally taking my V card right now. You know, you're literally taking away the one of the most sacred things that at that time, I didn't know how sacred that was because I wish that somebody would have told me their story. Tell, tell me why it's sacred. Don't tell me it's a sacred thing. Wait for the right person. I, if somebody had just went into depth and, and tell, told me their true story raw and unfiltered, I probably would have never gave that part of me to him. And that's why I'm like, let me go ahead and just share my story because it could be somebody who's contemplating on losing their virginity and I'm probably gonna be that person that will help you. I didn't like it at all. The day that I lost my virginity changed my perspective on sex as a whole. It made me change the way I look at sex. I always say I wish I lost it to the person I'm with now because the person that I'm with now gives me that validation and that connection. Losing it to that guy, like it was excruciating pain. And then of course, you know, you bleed after because they don't pop the cherry. After he did what he did, I noticed that, you know, the fluids that come out of his body was yellow. That shit was yellow, sus. Okay, and I was like, is this supposed to be like that? Like, you don't, you, I'm like, isn't this supposed to be white? Like that, that man was dirty. I just thank God that I didn't catch no STD or no disease from him because when I, I that shit didn't look normal to me, baby. It took him about four minutes 
and that was it you know and then after that it was just like okay cool bye deuces okay my bad y'all i literally had to bring out the big green light because my camera light died okay so where was i so yes it was it took him all about four to five minutes to do his thing to reach his climax and yeah it was like deuces goodbye you know and then i remember after going to his house i went to my friend's house of course i looked in my underwear and you know my cherry had popped and i remember you know the blood that was in my underwear and that might be tmi but <laughs> that's why i remember my underwear i remember the blood i remember the smell i remember feeling very disrespected in a way i remember feeling very like ill about myself like ugh. like it wasn't all that i remember the pain like i remember sitting on, on the toilet at my friend's house and i'm just like bro that shit hurt so bad you know and, and of course you know i'm sore down there i didn't even get to get worked up or anything like it was just so unromantic so it's like like that man literally got his shit off and was like okay there wasn't no cuddling after i want to say we probably met up another one or two times to do it again and all those times like it gotten a little better but it wasn't it was just no connection with me and that boy with me and d okay d was just there for the d okay he wasn't there emotionally it was it was just weird right fast forward one of my friends ended up telling me that he actually has a girlfriend the girl ended up being on the cheerleading squad and in the same grade as him i had i was not aware of this whatsoever it's not like he posted her on his page it's not like they was around school really like Ugh. it was like that and that that's why at the beginning before we even did anything he was very paranoid about meeting me like in in school and stuff and like hugging me and like he was he wasn't he wasn't too much of that and that's why he was also talking to a whole nother girl while taking my v card i didn't even know i didn't know and i was just like bruh like this man had a whole girlfriend and mind you i didn't have i never had any emotional uh, connection to him i never had an emotional attachment to him even after he took my v card it was just like something that happened that situation that event was just something that happened right him and his girlfriend used to be like on and off or whatever and i even confronted him about having a girlfriend but yet you're messing with me or whatever and when i tell you this was one of the dumbest ninjas i have ever ran into or that i have ever talked to because he would literally it was weird like he tried to take me on a date to mcdonald's it's like i knew that he didn't have money but yet he was trying to buy me shit and i was just like i'm good because i'm the type of person where i'm not gonna sit here and let you spend your last on me even though i really should have made that nigga spend his goddamn last you should have got me something before you got yourself something it was just one of those it was just giving broke energy it was giving dirty it was so the signs was there the signs was there but i was just very like i was so interested i was so intrigued by losing that part of myself to fit in with my friends the signs was there so the signs was there um yeah so he did try to take me on a date a few times like whenever we texted it would just be like some weird shit like he just wouldn't it's just he just didn't put two and two together he was one of those type of guys Ugh, like how can you be this way but be this way like you're just not all the way there it was it was just weird fast forward okay again the last time where we met up to do what we did it was very unpleasant okay what i'm about to tell you guys and why this situation kind of gets me emotional and why i don't like talking about it i don't really like bringing up this guy because he's like it's almost like a trigger for me because the last time we met up wasn't so pleasant like the other times we did it it was just sex it was just being kids doing shit we don't we not supposed to be doing right the last time we met up i remember i was going to the movies with my friends and we was supposed to meet up but i said y'all i'm about to go stop over at d's house real quick and you know they already knew that you know how your friends be hyping you up like oh get it said go ahead go ahead get that d <laughs> driving to his house like even though we talked about like doing it like okay come over this day we're gonna do the da 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 whatever right because mind you him and his girlfriend was on and off this was one of the times where him and his girl was off and my dumb ass still talking to this ninja all right still talking to this ninja. the cringe the cringe that i feel for for her okay for the girl that i used to be the cringe that i feel right now is like unbearable driving to his house i had this feeling in my stomach like i had this feeling where i really didn't want to go over there because mind you i wasn't feeling him 100 it was just something to do at that point it was just something 
just to say that I was doing something, right? I remember driving to his house because I dropped my friends off at the movies. They was waiting for me there and I was gonna be like, quick like there and back right a part of me is just like mm, i don't know if i really want to do this like i kind of just want to like cut this off like i really didn't want to like fuck with him anymore at this point because he was just weird he was just one of those weird ass niggas like it was it just wasn't giving i remember going to his house i came through the back door mind you his room is now in this family room or whatever so this time he had a bed in there it looked like the trap house whatever right so i'm just looking around and i'm just like Ugh. for some reason the room like the vibe in the house was off and i was just like uh you know like i don't know if i really want to do this so i told him that i said i don't know if i really want to do this you know like i think i'm gonna just go when i tell you this man changed like a switch when i tell you this man changed like a switch and i was about to turn around he said he hurried up and ran in front of me blocked the door and was like where you going? What? We, we planned this. You, this is what you came over here for. Really just like basically forced me to stay there. I was like, I, I don't want to do it no more. And, and Liz, I could just see like, I could see his face changing. You know what I mean? Like his face was, was from chill to like, I'm about to get mad. You know what I mean? I was aware of people, you know, getting assaulted in that way. And I just didn't want to make it any worse because I could already see like, it was gonna be a problem if I really tried to be like, hey, like, no, I don't wanna do it. And I told him, I said, I don't wanna do it anymore. Like, I'm not feeling it. He just started like walking up towards me. And like, you know how when you're walking up on somebody and it forces that person to kind of walk backwards? That's what was, that's what he was doing to me. So he was like walking, like walking up on me and I'm walking backwards and I end up walking backwards towards the bed. He ends up pushing me on the bed. I'm sitting there like in awe. Like, I'm just like, wait, is this really about to happen right now? Am I really, is this really about to happen right now? Because I said I don't want to, <laughs> and he's gonna, he's gonna force me to stay. Moral of the story is, he didn't let me leave. We still ended up having intercourse. He took my pants off or whatever, and he did his shit. I pulled my pants up. I didn't say shit to him, y'all. I, I picked up my pants. I just walked out. I didn't even say anything. I got in my car, and I was just like, I didn't know how to process what just happened. I didn't process exactly what had happened. Whenever a female says no, so like, whenever you say no, no means no, period. If the girl is not feeling it, if the guy is not feeling it. This works for both men and females. Like, if you, can, you can't be a female try to push up on the guy and be like listen he's like i'm not feeling it uh and you're gonna force him like you can't do that to a female either you can't do that to nobody no means no and when you are forcing somebody to do something that they really don't want to do that's considered non-consensual sex to me i'm like nah that that can't happen because you think that non-consensual sex is supposed to be very violent. I'm sorry if this triggers anybody, but you think that that's supposed to be a violent thing. And a lot of times it, it doesn't even have to be something where somebody's, you know, being super violent to you. When, when he did what he did, the first thing that he did wrong was blocking the door not letting me leave the second thing he did wrong was walking against me forcing me to lay down on the bed you know i'm just i'm just there like at that point i i, I came out of my body not even processing that this man took advantage of me he took advantage of the fact that i did come there we did plan to do what we did but he didn't respect the fact that I didn't want to do it anymore. Like, I was not feeling it. I was not feeling him. I was just like, no, bro. Like, I would rather, I want to go home. I just, I stopped because I didn't want it to go any further. I didn't want it to go any further than it could have. Like, I didn't know if this man had a temper. I didn't want to even put myself in that predicament. It's crazy. When I tell that story, like, it took me, like, a while to process that I, that that is a form, I'm going to just say non-consensual sex, because I don't know how YouTube is really going to, like, process these words. I blame myself. Like, I never considered that because I'm like, well, I did go over there. I did, we did plan this and stuff. No, so was, no, no. If you said no, that right there, no means no. So this is to any girl, like... It took me a while to tell that story because the person that I lost it to was not a good person. Actually, it's so weird because after that, he tried to act normal and he tried to like hit me up in my DMs. I, I, I broke off complete contact with him. I didn't want nothing to do with him at all. Whenever I see his name, like even to this day, like, like I think he got the hint now, but like up until like a year ago, this ninja 
was still fucking trying to get in my DMs talking about some hey. And it's like, I have nothing to say to him because after I processed it, like I processed it a lot after high school because in high school, you know, I kind of blame myself for it. But I processed it a lot after high school as an adult. And I'm like, that is something that that is something traumatic that happened to me and it wasn't traumatic in a violent way but it was it was very emotionally traumatizing for me the fact that i was dumb enough to 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 do the, what i did with him and it, he didn't deserve it at all and even though we was already like doing the do and he just wanted he wanted to take it that last time and that was the last time i ever went over there that was the last time i ever talked to him i, I walked out i went to the movies with my friends and I acted like nothing happened because I tried to push it so far in the back. And it's, I remember exactly what I was wearing that day, by the way. I do have a picture of that day and I remember what I was wearing. And it's not as traumatic as like other people's stories. So that's why I never like claimed that that type of thing happened to me. But it did. I was taken advantage of that that night. I really was. I was there. It's just crazy. It's crazy. People are weird. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it no more, you guys. But I just wanted to share this story because I know, I know that the cycle repeats itself, right? I know that there is teenage girls out here who are wanting to just be fast, to give yourself to the wrong person and you don't even know it. You think that it's the right person and it's not. Because as soon as you become an adult and you think back on your teenage self, you're gonna be like, damn, like there's a lot of mistakes that I'm recognizing right now that I could have avoided. But yeah, like I just hope that this helps. I hope that my story and this video helps someone who is potentially thinking about doing this or who has done this so if you're not alone i'm just here for my girls i am a girl's girl take it from me it don't matter who it is like people will show you their true colors at the end of the day all right but anyway i'm gonna leave this on a good note i hope that this video really helps somebody this video woo, so it brought out some emotions <laughs> I really it brought out some some feelings that I haven't I haven't really felt until I started talking about it today so I'm gonna just go ahead and leave it right here make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button make sure y'all go ahead and check out all of my other videos make sure y'all follow me on all of my social medias link down in the description box leave a comment say hi say bye say whatever you think about this video and I will see you guys in the next video bye